Well, we are back on Morning Line. Our guest is uh, Vice Mayor Jim Shulman. The number on the screen, if you want to join in the conversation, you see it there, 737-7587. Let's go to Eric right off the top. Eric, Happy New Year. How are you, Eric? Happy New Year. I hope you and the Vice Mayor had a great New Year and a Merry Christmas to both of you. You, you too, you yeah. too. I also want to say, Nick, uh, I haven't talked to you in a while, but I just really appreciate that tribute that you did to Joe a while back uh, because I know I had talked to you since then. Uh, it's been quite a while, but, uh, you know, even though I didn't know the guy, I just appreciated uh, that he called in, was a constant caller, and just his opinions and you everything. remember Joe. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you for saying that. We missed yeah. Joe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, Nick, I just want to let you know, I'm fully vaccinated, had a booster shot, and also uh, had a flu shot as well. But the interesting thing is, before the holidays, I actually came in contact with a friend who tested positive for COVID. It made me kind of nervous, so I kind of uh, sheltered myself for a few days and went and got tested. Thankfully, I tested negative, so I didn't have to stay away from family and relatives and friends for the holidays. And that was a good. <laughs> so, good. Good for you. I'm but, happy to hear that. But, uh, but, but I have two questions for the vice mayor. Uh, yeah, one I'm going to bring up because I know if I did something else, we'll announce, of course, the latest whole issue of the transportainment vehicles. Uh, I'd heard there were also some council members that had come up with some alternative bills. I think there was one particular bill. I don't know if you'd heard about this. I think it was about a month ago, the Steve Glover, I think, is who was the councilman that came up with concern, I think, downtown businesses and the school downtown. Uh, just want to get your thoughts about the bills that were out there, some of the alternate bills and what you were looking at working on. The other thing, I think this has kind of not been an issue for a while. I mean, it probably still is. And that's the whole Airbnb situation, some legal, some illegal. I think I live in their house. I don't know if it's an Airbnb or not. But I know it's rented or was being rented by college students. I don't know if it was Belmont or Vanderbilt because I've seen them from time to time either Friday or Saturday night where they have like 20 to 30 kids coming out of the house. And sometimes it can be frustrating when you're trying to sleep mm -hmm. at night and there's still situations are going to like by two three in the morning. I know you personally can't do anything about that, but you would think the neighbor or somebody would call the police or something like that when you've got that many kids or something like that going on. I mean, I'm not against people having fun and stuff like that, but it's ridiculous when you're trying to sleep and you have somebody coming out of the house and you've got like about 20 or 30 kids, whether they're Belmont or Vanderbilt hmm. students or some type of party or just whatever. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Y'all take care and we'll talk to you again soon. All right. Thank you, Eric. Which one do you want to tackle yeah, first? I'll go Airbnb first. Um, so um, uh, one of the things that, um, that Eric may want to try to figure out is whether this is just an Airbnb or if it's a bunch of college students that are renting right. the property and yeah. every weekend they invite their friends over because yeah. they can. I remember that. Um, yeah. The Airbnb stuff, you know, was such a loud issue for a, a long period of time. And then a lot of, uh, there was actions taken, there was additional regulations and um, more of a focus. And then I think um, the codes department kind of upped their game. Um, there was some software brought in to try to find those who weren't, you know, who were renting their houses out but weren't, weren't actually licensed to do it. Um, that issue has been a lot quieter. There are still bills out there every so often that kind of tinker with it. Um, but overall, it seems to be okay. Now, if there's a problem with Airbnb, um, I think you can, obviously, if it's really late at night, a lot of people are making a lot of noise, you can call the police department. Um, but uh, you can also call codes. If you go to the website, so Nashville.gov. If you have a home and you want to rent out, do you, you have to get a license for mm -hmm. it. And yeah. is, is, is there a criteria that could really, what would prevent you from being able to do what you want to do with the your home? The biggest criteria is that I think there's a number, a limited number in various areas. Okay. And, you know, uh, it's one thing to be a, a non-owner occupied. It's another one to be an owner occupied. There are limitations on how many, but you have to go, you have to go request and get a license to do it. Yeah, because I would not want to live next door to one that's constantly doing it. It's just, you know, and I've used Airbnb, so mm -hmm. I, there's good people that use it, but I wouldn't want to live, I want my neighborhood to have half the houses being that, but you understand why these these investors are buying up these properties. They're not turning around and selling them. They're either renting them, mm -hmm. but think about rent. You can rent out a house maybe for, uh, you know, three, four, five grand a month. You can do Airbnb, and if it's a nice enough place close enough to the city, you can rent that out every night for mm -hmm. maybe a thousand bucks. Yeah. You do that, think about that. That's, that's 5,000 a week, not a month. And so there's big incentive for people to go ahead and if not just rent, Airbnb. But you know, you know as well as I do, unless you have possession of it, a lot of these people are not gonna care. They're gonna make noise. They don't leave there. They're gonna make a mess. And then, then they leave. And, and then, then they leave. They, then they and some I have zero desire to live near, I, I don't wanna live near um, a bunch of rentals. 
And nothing against people that rent, but it's just that if you're renting, it's not like your place. You're not going to care for it the same way you would if you owned it. Period. End of story. Well, I guess the question, Nick, would be, and, um, and maybe the viewers can call or send me messages. I mean, this issue has been floating around for a while. Yeah. Um, and I think, um, I mean, you hit, uh, you hit the nail on the head with the idea that uh, if I'm an investor, <clears throat> and I look at Nashville as a, you know, a, a yeah. hot city for people to come and visit. Uh, and there's a obviously a lack of affordable housing. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of places to go. Hotels are, are, you know, the prices were lower during the coronavirus, but I'm sure they're coming up. Uh, if I'm an investor, and I can outbid somebody who really wants to buy the house mm -hmm. and live there. And I can outbid them by because I've got additional resources. Yeah. Uh, you get the house, and then you look at the money that can be made. Once you get it fixed up, you can start renting it out through Airbnb or yeah. some other rental service, and all of a sudden you're making lots of money very quickly. Mm -hmm. I get that part. The, what he, what's killing us is that that's driving up the housing costs because mm -hmm. people are trying to outbid other people. It's also eliminating or reducing the ability of particularly younger people who are looking to buy a home from finding a home because there are no homes available. Right. And when they come to, when they finally find one they want and they start, they put in an offer, the person who has those resources is going to outbid so yeah. they can take it and then make money off of it. Uh, the question is, what are we doing to our city? I mean, how do we, yeah, yeah we're, obviously it's very expensive to find a house <laughs> and you can't find one. I There's, can't imagine. Well, yeah, if you don't have one and you're looking. Well, and, and then transportainment. Was there anything new on that front? Um, so, um, Council Member O'Connell had brought a bill really kind of getting this thing under regulation. Boards are going to, you know, be created to take a look at this and, and kind of get these people licensed. There's an alcohol component that's being done. Mm. Um, at one point they weren't able to do it. I think unless they actually enclose the entire thing. Um, so th there's still some things being worked out on that. Um, and then Councilmember Glover, because Eric mentioned this, Councilmember Glover has a bill up tonight to actually limit the area during certain times where they, the, those transportainment vehicles can go. Okay. But what he's, I think what he's really trying to do is keep them away from schools. Hmm. So, um, you know, when schools are in session, those things don't need to be driving around the school making a lot of noise. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, let's take a call from Ann. Ann, good morning. Hi, Ann. Good morning. Happy um, New Year. Hi, Ann. Three things. Um, first, to Eric, I found out during the building boom on my street, if you can hear the noise in your home with your windows and doors closed for a period of time, it does not matter what time of day it is, the police will come out and the noise will have to be turned down. It <clears throat> does not matter at what time of day it is. It has to do with whether or not you are within your home and it is reasonable for you not to have to hear it. That I know for fact. Secondly, mm. this is just one issue with the Airbnb and the homeowners being able to rent. We had one house torn down on that lot were four conjoined skinny row homes yes. with a parking pad for two vehicles. Of those four, three cannot maintain the mortgages, so they are renting out part of those houses. Now we have a homeowner with more than two vehicles, and they're renting out three of these people are doing this. So we have <laughs> excess vehicles on a road that was built and laid 70 or 80 years ago and does not have the space. And now we have parking up and down this street and we never know whose vehicles they are they are blocking mailboxes. We don't know where, where these cars come from. The elderly get scared when they wake up in the morning and they see that car at four, in the, four o'clock. These things matter to the people in the area. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, and 
This is just when you're sitting at home in East Nashville and you get bored, you antagonize the crazies on the Facebook page. And one of the things that comes up is how we can resolve our housing, especially for the homeless. And a lot of times the property along the river, the old National Guard Armory comes up. And I know that's asbestos built property. But what about using one of our schools? Has that ever been a thought? And if not, why not? Constantly, we are upgrading a small elementary school to a larger facility. And the government, Metro has that property to use, has it ever been a thought of converting one of them into a shelter? You have a kitchen area, you have showers, you have gymnasiums, you have ample, ample property that can be used and it's constantly, constantly being done in the metro system. You could work with the school board and the metro council, and you can't tell me there's not a building sitting empty somewhere. Hmm. And I'm sorry, but you've had too many encores, and I just had to get it out of my system. <laughs> so happy New Year. Happy New Year. Year. That. No, that's all right. And I knew we had a lot of encores, and you had your time there. I was going to let her talk as long as she wanted. And sure. She's always great. Oh, um, yeah, and great. All right. And um, very smart. I yeah. bet she has a good handle on what's going on. Yeah, schools. Are there some vacant ones sitting around? Yeah, so, so Anne is... Um, um, just a couple of weeks all, uh, late on this one, hmm. we actually are using a vacant school because okay. we did what Ann said we should do, okay. and that is we called um, the Metro School System because we needed a, a shelter. We is this for the emergency cold yeah. shelter? Mm -hmm. Is that the plan? This is for the winter plan okay. when it gets really cold like it did last yeah. night. And, and, and the rest of this week, pretty much. Yeah, people's lives are in danger because it's so cold outside that you're trying to, it, you need a place to, um, for people to go shelter. And so we found a vacant school building. Okay. Now, there's always that issue of not in my backyard, and we know that. Um, there are... There are not a lot of vacant school buildings, but um, if you remember, we had those homelessness meetings, uh, yes. the 30th of November, the December the 1st, oh, yeah. and December the 20th, and we just sent over to the Homelessness Planning Council last week a list of, uh, I'm, I should have counted, there were probably about 150 maybe ideas that came out of that December 20th meeting. This is from the general public about what we should be doing to deal with outdoor homelessness. But what Ann's talking about was listed by many people as something we should do. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And that is to use Metro surplus property or vacant Metro buildings and actually use them as shelters. Yeah. Um, or, uh, you know, when, if we're really being innovative, Nick, what we should do, I think, is if we do have some of these vacant Metro buildings, whether the school buildings or just metro buildings, you take them and you convert them into some type of apartment living, and you mm -hmm. can use them as shelter space too. What we were trying to do at the public meetings was utilize everybody's different ideas and come up with all kinds of ways. We're, we're, the city is full of innovative people. Mm -hmm. You think we could come up with something? Yeah. Um, Austin, Texas has um, no longer what, the, what, what some people might call a sanctioned encampment. It's really a community. What they did was they took a lot of acreage, about 200 acres, and they have built a community where people can find shelter, but there's a community garden that's being uh, cultivated mm -hmm. there. There are businesses on the facility. It's become its own community, a sense of community, which a, a lot of encampments sometimes are anyway. And so they've got a space that is actually, I think, thriving. Mm -hmm. What, what are we doing about this here? And I think what Ann's talking about, what other people who came to the meeting said, is let's use the resources we have and let's try to come up with some solutions. Yeah. Well, it's good, at least for the cold weather right mm -hmm. now, using that vacant school. Yeah. And that's temporary, though. That's just temporary. Temporary, or, uh, temporary until maybe it becomes the right thing to do. Okay, yeah. So maybe this is a chance to I don't see think how the, it yeah, works. I don't think the school's ever going to be used again. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. the other alternatives, yeah, just tear it down and something else goes there or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's go to David. David, good morning. Hi, David. Hey, good morning, Nick. How morning. are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. Good. Hey, Nick, as a, as a future resident of Davidson County, when I retire, I have a question, uh, a couple of questions real quick. Um, 
Does the vice mayor or the city have uh, data that would support eliminating the emissions control testing? And second, is uh, light rail or mass transit to help curb um, mm -hmm. uh, the congestion around the city? Is that is that uh, proposal or that thought uh, off the board or maybe even still being considered? Thank you. Hey, Thank where, you where, 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 Dave, where do you live now? So you live outside the county and you're going to move here when you retire? Yes, sir. I'm out of state. Oh, you're out of state, and then you're going to move to Nashville, you've decided. Well, yes, sir. Um, my children and my grandchildren are, are all in the metro area. Okay. And uh, obviously, they're wanting granddad and grandmom to be close <laughs> when we get retired. Sure, sure thing. Well, welcome. You know, join the club. So many people moving here, but those are good questions. This is a guy who's got his mind on the environment. I kind of wanted the same thing. You kind of touched yeah. on the health department looking. Look, I don't want to get rid of the emissions because people are complaining about the long lines. Too bad for you. I want clean air. But if you can say that the emissions are not needed because cars are being made cleaner now, there's no need for it, then I'm good for it. And you're saying the health department kind of sees that because it, yeah. it's a special concern in larger metropolitan areas where there are more vehicles. Right. But, I mean, if you think about it, um, the, the surrounding counties around us had all gotten rid of their emissions. Yeah, but they're not as busy as us. Yeah, but a lot of their cars come into Davidson County yeah. to come to work. So the question was, you know, uh, we're true. making all our folks, um, you know, go through the testing requirements. <laughs> you know, obviously the, the, uh, the need for it, based upon all the requirements that came down from, you know, whether they're federal or the state EPA regulations, or whatever, said yeah. you don't need to do it anymore. And so all the counties started saying, okay, we're, we're not yeah. going to make people go through. Now, go back for just a, uh, for a second on... Um, the whole process. Uh, uh, in terms of what was happening before and what made everybody really get mad about this thing was um, contracting, we're contracting, Metro's contracting out to do these, you know, to do the emissions testing. What people started calling us about was that a lot of the a lot of the centers were closed because they didn't have the staff. Hmm. And the problem is if, if you have six facilities around the city, whatever we had, and only a couple of them are open. I know that Craighead was open quite a bit. Mm -hmm. People, it was taking people three to four hours to get through the line to, to pay their nine dollars to get checked and then have to go someplace else to get their tax. You know, um, I think we all want it to be better. If we ever have to do this again, you ought to be able to go in, get your emissions test, and then get your, your sticker right there. Right. Because <laughs> we, we want to eliminate pollution or yeah. the number of... And, and you're making we're them make, drive more. You're making them drive more to get, <laughs> get stuff. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So um, in terms of David's question, uh, the data, I'm sure you could find some data, but tonight at the council meeting, um, resolution up, which I think will pass. I'm, I'm not hearing anything really mm -hmm. otherwise, but we'll see. Um, but it's to get rid of the emissions testing here in Davidson County. And you're going to hear from the health department. And we're going to hear from the health okay. department. The other, on mass transit, as you know, we had a big vote uh, about uh, three or four years ago that was rejected 65 to 35 mm -hmm. to actually deal with a lot of mass transit issues. Uh, it's still on the table. I know the mayor, Mayor Cooper, has come up with a kind of a big mass transit plan or a big transportation plan, but in terms of what people, most people think of as mass transit in terms of light rail and other things, um, that's still to be seen, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I don't know how that's going to happen. The longer you wait, the harder it's going to be. The more expensive it's going to be, the more congested, the more building that will have occurred that'll be like, well, that was where a light rail could have made its way through, and now we've got a skyscraper there. Um, it's just, it's just the yeah. longer you wait, there's never a good time to spend a billion dollars. I agree. I understand <laughs> that. But, you know, no if, time if, like um, if the future. Need, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, four years ago, Voted down, yes. If we wanted to look at the same plan now, it'd be probably double the price. I mean, just so I, I just don't know. And I think at some point, it's going to become an issue for the city. I mean, one that is going to cost the city dearly if well, we don't address it. Meaning, people finally say, "Enough, I, I'm not going there because well, of the crap that comes with no transit." Well, if you ever go to, um, this is what I always find. Not that I'm a a city nerd when I go mm -hmm. do this, but if I go to another city, I will kind of sometimes look at their street, how, how things yeah. have been laid out, just to see how they do it. So I think um, one of the best places to look at is probably Salt Lake City, mm -hmm. um, but I would also say that um, Fort Myers, Florida, mm -hmm. 
they just have wide, expansive roads. Mm. And they did it, I assume, for purposes of allowing for, in case they ever needed to do something. But there's not a lot of traffic, even though there's a lot of cars, yeah. because they have these wide open spaces, they can always add more lanes. And I think Salt Lake City was laid out so that they had plenty of room, and then they have a, a trolley that goes down through. That is so forward thinking. It's just, it's a hard thing. You know, listen, we'll take a break when we come back. We can take some more phone calls. We might talk a little more about transit. Got some other questions to ask you just about, you know, priorities for the new year. Um, and, and let's touch bases on the Titans <laughs> a little bit. Just remember how crazy it was when the Preds played for the state. Stanley Cup. Of course, you hosted games during this. The Super Bowl will be in California, but boy, this team has a shot. And what it will mean to the city if it actually makes its way and hosts these playoff games. We'll be back with more right after this.